Come one, come all to the cringiest show of all time, Netlink Daily. Time for tech news. In a bit of a plot twist, we got some news about Intel's upcoming Coffee Lake CPU. A user on Twitter reached out to motherboard manufacturer ASRock to ask if the Z270 supercarrier would support the 8th gen core series of processors. ASRock replied saying no! Coffee Lake CPU is not compatible with 200 series motherboards. Say what? The tweet has since been deleted but not before the internet took screenshots of it. Most of the industry was under the impression that since Coffee Lake had similarities in terms of microarchitecture with the previous generations of CPUs, that it would make sense that Coffee Lake would be compatible with existing 1151 socket motherboards. Granted that usually a BIOS update is needed. But this tweet from ASRock seems to coincide with other rumors as well. Chinese hardware site PC Eva had posted up some official looking slides from Intel which also supports the idea that Coffee Lake chips would indeed need a new motherboard. Tom's hardware has since reached out to ASRock and have confirmed Coffee Lake's incompatibility with 200 series boards. So if you were planning to get Coffee Lake chip, just make sure you get a new motherboard too. Just be safe. Tweaktown has received Vega 56 benchmark numbers from an industry source. As some of you might know, the AMD RX Vega 56 GPU is slotted to compete directly with Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1070. So of course the benchmarks were run on both the 56 and 1070, both running at 1440 resolutions on an i7-7700K with 16 gigs of RAM for Battlefield 1, Doom, Civilization 6, and even Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The benchmark results are as follows. In Battlefield 1, the 56 scored 95.4 FPS, while the 1070 scored 72.2. In Civilization 6, Team Red scored 85.1, and again, the 1070 scored 72.2 FPS. In Doom, 56 scored 101.2, and the 1070 scored 84.6. Finally, for Call of Duty, the Vega card scored 99.9 .9 FPS, while the GTX card scored 92.1 FPS. It looks like everything is going Team Red's way. How many of you will be making the switch to Team Red? Leave a comment down below. Are you tired of having multiple controllers for multiple systems or consoles? Well, apparently us Canadians have a solution for all your multi-controller woes. For the past two years, Canadian startup Digital Depth have been developing the All Controller. The All Controller aims to be the world's first truly universal controller. They've started a Kickstarter campaign and have already reached over $100,000 pledged with still over 40 days left at the time of writing. The controller has a 40 hour battery life, uses USB, Bluetooth or wireless dongle connectivity, has back paddles, button mapping and macros, keyboard and mouse mode and it's currently compatible with iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, Apple TV, Android TV, Steam, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One and it's getting Wii, Wii U and Switch support coming soon. It even has a built-in screen. You will need to pledge at least $100 Canadian for the wireless version of the All Controller, which might seem steep, but you won't ever have to buy another spare controller ever again for any system. Now usually we're a bit weary about telling you to check out Kickstarter campaigns, but this one is worth checking out. <laughs> it's time for Lightning Round. Nintendo said on Facebook that pre-orders for Super Nintendo Classic will start later this month. So please, people of the internet, pre-order for the sake of playing SNES games, not for the sake of making a profit. Don't be a dick. Disney is teaming up with VR gaming center The Void to launch a Star Wars VR experience called Star Wars – The Secrets of the Empire. The experience is said to include touch, feel and smells from galaxies far, far away. Do, do lightsabers have smells? Bet they smell like cotton candy. Ooh, maybe they smell like barbecue ribs. As you can tell, I haven't had lunch yet. OnePlus has confirmed that Australia will be getting the OnePlus 5 offered through a soft launch. No other details for the launch program are available just yet. Minecraft Story Mode will be coming to the Nintendo Switch on August 22nd. Google's Daydream VR headset is on sale in the US until August 12th for $60. And if you thought you didn't have enough Razer Chroma RGB lighting in your life, you can now order the Razer Chroma Hardware Development Kit for $79.99 US. Sources for all today's news stories can be found in the N6 forum post link down below.
dab on those haters. Thanks, Vlado, for your yo dog submission. If you would like to say, if you would like to have us say some random stuff, hit us up on Twitter with hashtag NCITODog. Yo dog, this week is NCIX back to school kickoff sale because summer is almost over. Yes, it's sad. Time flies. The Canadian deal is an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X CPU for $429.99. That's a savings of $120. The American deal is an NZXT Manta black and red mini ITX case for $131.99. That's over $50 off. Click up here or down in the description for all of this week's savings and the rest of the details for those sales I just mentioned. All right, that's it for Netlink Daily. Thank you so much for watching. Click over here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment down below for fans with benefits, and subscribe, because it's free for more videos like this from NCIX. See you next week!